Aaron from Australia. We left Australia uh, three months ago to purchase a boat in Florida uh, called the Sea Witch, a famous Gaffrey catch from 1937. Um, unfortunately, when we got there, the boat was full of rot, so it wouldn't have lasted five minutes. It was destroyed, so we we didn't buy the boat, and um, we got onto Craigslist and found a boat in Vancouver. So we decided to fly to Vancouver and check out a boat. And this is here called the Narwhal. It's not Narwhal. Narwhal's the the marine mammal, the unicorn of the sea. Yeah. We bought the boat from a um, an ex drug addict who just lived aboard. A hope kind of homeless. We decided to buy the boat um, from David and um, we handed over a large sum of money and he disappeared for two weeks so we were worried that he was just gonna run away with our money. Uh, we were worried that it wasn't even his boat. <laughs> luckily he turned back up in two weeks. He'd been skiing with our money. He decided no, hey this is a lot of money I'm gonna go and take he took his girlfriend yeah. away to Whistler or somewhere right. Um, but yes, we bought the boat and the plan is to, to we've been restoring it for three months solid and now we're going to jars and heavy things on the bottom shelf. We've got enough stacked all the way up in there to last us until we get back to Australia in oh, five, six weeks, maybe longer. Pretty much we go off what we've been eating now, like week by week. So, you know, we'll have pasta a couple of times a week, rice and curry and salad and veggies and things, and then just multiply that by how many weeks we think that we'll be at sea. Plus some extras, because you never know what will happen. Sims just fixed the, t um, the water tank, which is amazing, and our kitchen sink. So instead of having to use this pump handle, which had ceased after however many years, you can see how, how much of a strain that is. We were doing that every day, trying to get water out. But Sim fixed it, so now we just press a button and it comes out, which is such a relief. Three months of working out every morning with that galley tap. We've got two water tanks um, underneath the seats, plus we've got all of these water bottles to fill up and a bigger one there and a couple of jerry cans. Perhaps if we were back in Australia or we were more, more permanent here, we would have set up all of that. Like I really wanted to get a veggie patch going up on deck, but it's quite impractical if we're going across the ocean and you can't transport soil and all of that. So that would be more of a permanent setup thing for us I feel but we've got the tarp um yeah if need be we know how to rig rig it up and get rainwater if it all goes tits up here's our grab bag this is the grab bag if anything goes wrong um we've got flares in here a flare gun happy trails mix some tins of tuna first aid we've got to add some water in there in this bag and over here we've got our driftwood, um, that's what we use to fuel our fire. It doubles as a diesel stove except it's broken so we just use driftwood and the driftwood's free. Here's up forwards. This is where my bedroom was going to be except it became storage and all of our bells and whistles and it's good not to have it cluttered so we can you know, we know where everything is in here, in case of an emergency. Um, spare sails here, extra paper towel here, wind vanes behind there, water jug. We need to fill this up. I've labelled it so we don't put gasoline in there. Spare ropes, tools, extra paint, more things under here. Balsam's chair. There's plenty of... Plenty of storage in boats, you know? There's all these cupboards and bells and whistles. It's like being in a treehouse. 
you know, it's it's fun. You're like, oh, what's in here? So we spent the first month exploring all the little nooks and crannies and like, oh, is there treasure in here? You know, what's David left us? We've got two, two entrance points into the boat up forwards here, which is handy if we're working on deck. Um, and then of course the other stairs going down into the galley. Originally, this side of the boat mirrored that side of the boat and they were all four separate bunks. One crazy rainy night, <laughs> Simon had had enough. Um, it was kind of, it felt like a waste of space, but now we've taken that out and made it into a nice big bed there. While we're at sea, there's a lean cloth under here from that just hooks in up under there and over there so we don't roll out. Navigation station. Boombox for deck parties. So rather than have the whole boat wired with speakers everywhere, we just we use this. You can use these with obviously technology nowadays, so you use Bluetooth for speakers. All the pilots and all the sailors in the world now use iPads and iPhones. So every time you see a plane, even a 757 commercial airline pilot, he's using an iPad. Um, these big boats, the small boats, Use an iPad. If the iPad gets broken, you bring out an old iPhone, and or I've got a new iPhone, and um, and this is a satellite phone, so we can get the internet when we're out, and we can also log um, our position um, in real time. A depth sounder, and down in here is a, a radar for spawning of the ships at night time when we're when we're seeing so they don't hit any um, ships when we're when we're flying around. Um, the depth sound is pretty cool when you're sailing along it comes up with little fishies and it shows you the number like 24 fish, <laughs> 2 fish, 5 fish, yeah. it's pretty cool. So yeah that's the, there's a little fold out table down here, a little fold out seat which is cool. So you fold out the seat and um, you perch yourself on that little seat there, hold on to the side of the boat and normally this was a, for yeah. charts, so you have big, big paper charts here. You put your paper charts down here and you and you navigate this way but now of course you just use iPhones and, and iPads and that's how you how you navigate. It makes it easy. You just press the button and say this is the way I want to go and that's it. It's just that simple. If you crawl through here, this is our aft cabin. Head here. Head or toilet. Um there's a diesel stove here, uh, a diesel heater, except when we haven't really pulled it apart and had a good look at it. We've spoken to a few people about it um, and they've given us a few pointers, but when we first bought the boat, the entire aft cabin was just black with soot. So we don't know if it was rigged up wrong or what he was doing in here. But the entire thing was just black, 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 black everywhere. So we had to scrub and scrub and take it back to, you know, the white paint that it used to be. Um, and it was the same in the galley and in that main cabin as well. So we kind of were veered away from using the diesel because we don't want to scrub all the walls again. And the driftwood works. It's free, cheap, easy. Just throw it in and it burns really well. We've got a few access points. Um, to get into the engine, if we need to work on the engine. Our dishes, we just scoop some water up um, from the ocean, put in a little bit of detergent and scrub them on deck. We haven't had any running water up until yesterday. We've had no running water for three months, for three months on the boat. So that's been really difficult. Better things to be doing with your time than dishes. So I see. <laughs> I've been dishes more than you, haven't I? <laughs> no, well, let's not say that. <laughs> let's not go that far. <laughs> the solar panel was on board when we bought the boat. It's a small panel, um, but it, it's ideal. It, it keeps power to the batteries all day for all of our lights and electronics, charging up laptops and all of our navigation stuff, you know, our iPhones and iPads and, and depth sounders and things. Um, we don't have much power on the boat, as in we don't have fancy power that, you know, ele um, electronic components that pull lots of power like uh, we don't have a fridge or a freezer or mm, blow heaters or anything heaters. like that the problem with having a, a, a solar panel on a, on a gaff rigged boat like this which is the old-fashioned pirate ship is that 
there's always a casting shadow on the panel and anytime the panel has a shadow on it it just doesn't work so it's difficult really is the, the best way to do it would stick them on the outside of the boat um, but then it causes the problems like when the, when the ocean gets big they're going to rip the solar panels off uh, we had a little Honda generator which was amazing it was so quiet we could run it outside a little petrol generator and down below we couldn't even hear it um, we could run signers so we used the generator to sign all of the deck and all of our timber all of the cabins and so the generator was excellent for charging everything uh, we've got an inverter of course to charge uh, personal computers and such most modern boats um, have an electric um, autopilot uh, where it's a big hydraulic ram and it keeps the boat steering on a course uh, a true course so you set this is where I want to go and the boat will go that way what we have is a self wind vane so this drives the boat and steers the boat without any electronic that uses the wind so you simply drop this um, this rudder here this rudder gets dropped into the water goes down we have this big paddle which you turn into the wind and, and a paddle goes like this in, in the wind which then drives this little little rudder and then the wires come back and it goes underneath underneath our uh, tiller here so we hook we hook in this this special device here under underneath the, the tiller and um, it's it, it, it's 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 hard to explain how it works and it's pretty complex with all of these ropes and runners running everywhere um, they're expensive they're about five or six thousand dollars easy you know it's quite easy to mount it but extremely difficult to get it to work well and basically to, to do that you get the boat sailing really well without this you get the, all the sails trimmed so the boat's perfectly sailing and then you hook this onto the tiller and set it and away you go both of these come up and down you make sort of a form of a butterfly but you're getting really nice breeze running through your boat and you can lock them and secure them they're really good to have on a they don't make these anymore similar to the gaff rig so this is a huge piece of timber um the way this is different so we're the only boat out of this whole yacht club here there's about 200 boats in here 150 boats in here we're the only boat with a gaff rig uh, you pull up this gaff and the whole boom and it sets in a whole different way they were designed for people that were sailing in trade winds so they're not good at going around boys all these boats are designed to kind of go around boys and racing this is designed to kind of go from A to B and use the power of, um, of the kind of the wind to go where you want to go that, talk about Columbus <laughs> the disadvantage is that you can't go to windward so Columbus had this gaff rig for going from A to B and he ditched it, got rid of it and wanted to go with the new Bermudan setup which is a typical boat with a triangle. He used that and ended up going back to a gaff because there's more power in a gaff for, for traveling with the trade winds. So, um, But yeah, not a boat today is made with the old traditional gaff rig and it's simply because you can't go to windward which means you can't point in towards the wind. As soon as the wind's coming from this angle, this boat will be pointing over this way, whereas all these boats will be pointing 20 degrees off the wind. We're about 50. So there's a big difference. And it's really, really heavy. <laughs> so I use all my strength to pull the thing up. But it's just manageable, so. We have marked um, all of the halyards now on both sides. Just so if we're out at sea and Sim's calling to me and it's loud or there's a storm or something it's hard to hear and he's going gaff gaff you know I can look up and it's just you know there's a lot of ropes to learn on this boat. It's been great like this is my first first time being on a boat and I'm learning lots from Captain Sid and yeah it's great. This is our manual winch so you pull it back and it pulls up two ring, like two uh, chain links and then drops one. So like for, it takes you forever. And if you've got 150 feet of line out, it takes you forever. Anyway, so we normally take them in turns of doing that, but it's fun. It's got us both quite fit. 
climbing up and down and doing all the ropes and you know not relying on electric winches and things yeah it's it's great do you feel fit Sid <laughs> no do you feel fit being on this boat Within, you know, you get, you can, you get very strong on a boat. Just, just sitting down on a boat, you get strong just for the motion of the boat tilting backwards and forwards. Even when you're just sitting there relaxing, you think, oh, this is relaxing. But your whole core and your stomach and your chest and your arms, you're actually holding yourself still. So just sitting down, you, you get a bit of a workout. Pulling the, pulling up the sails and hoisting these sails, reducing and running around, pulling ropes and rowing around and. It's quite an energetic sort of uh, place to be. If we have to go anywhere, we're always in the canoe. So it's built up our arm muscles, powering along, especially if it's hailing or it's really windy and we're just getting swept with the current or the tide, you're just battling against it, you know, and all we need is milk. <laughs> it's crazy. friend's balcony in Byron Bay and I'm, I'm quite used to living in small spaces before then you know I've lived in bungalows before and in a loft in a mud brick cottage and you know I'm quite used to living in small smaller confined spaces with not many possessions I feel like I've adjusted a bit easier than Simon maybe to living on a boat that's because I've been doing the opposite ten years I've been living in beautiful huge houses on top of mountains overlooking the ocean and had lots of materialistic stuff cars and motorbikes and big computers and all the all the things in the world really not doing it tough at all and um, coming onto a boat after after that is difficult um, having a bit of money and, and doing well in business to coming on a boat here in Vancouver has been um, quite hard. The weather is firstly, you know, Australia's 38 degrees when we left and got to Vancouver, it was two and it was snowing. Um, being down below for two months in this little, you know, it's raining every day and it's snowing every day. We've, we've locked ourselves down below and got the wood stove going. Um, I've only really known Aaron for sort of six months, so for three months it was like kind of this is, you know, it's going to be difficult. Um, but we've made the most of it. On the snowy, rainy, wet days, I write letters to people back home. And that keeps me going and keeps the sanity going, I guess. <laughs> you know, because it, it is hard, especially like what Sim was saying, being here in Canada, like we were here at peak of winter, it was snowing and raining and you just, we'd open the hatch in the morning, stick our heads out and go, numb, like. Yeah. We also, we ran out of money quite quickly, putting, putting all of the money that we did have into buying paint and sanding materials and this and that boat, yeah. in restoring the boat. So we couldn't, we didn't have enough money to just hire a car and go adventuring. So we were really confined to being Down here. below the whole time. I think we'll stay in bed for another hour, getting out of bed at midday instead of like, I used to get out of bed at five o'clock and go surfing. It's easy to stay in bed when it's raining out all the time, right? So. Yeah, it's been a big change. So we weren't prepared. We had, I've got three pairs of shorts and five t-shirts. We're in the Caribbean, right? It's 30 plus degrees, tropical paradise, sailing through the, the, you know, the South Pacific Islands. Suddenly when Vancouver, it's raining, it's snowing. We found ourselves going through thrift stores uh, every other day, walking out of there, spending hundreds of dollars in thrift stores and walking down the street with bin bags full of clothes and all the secondhand clothes to keep us warm. That was kind of fun. Um, so yeah, we just haven't been prepared for, for the weather and it has been pretty difficult. But looking forward to heading back to Australia and sailing back the Caribbean, uh, back not the Caribbean, this time we're going to go Hawaii and then, and then um, down through the Solomon Islands and back to Australia. There's thousands of islands to see. Um, but you know, 20, 25 days from here to Hawaii, straight, straight hit. Um, no communication, you know, you're out there alone. Um, so it's quite anxious and sort of slightly terrified, but 
We have done some sailing. I've done a lot of sailing before. I'm not terrified, and I think it's because I've never endured high seas before. <laughs> she doesn't know what she's in for. Sim's so nervous all... and scared, and I'm going, Sim, what are you? Just relax. We're that's leaving all... soon, and Sim's going, oh, shit. <laughs> that's a worry for me, just knowing that Erin's not, um, you know, not... Uh... I, I am. I have some idea. Yeah, I mean that, and and obviously sailing the boat's quite difficult. Yeah, so leg. 24, 36 hours after the first day or two, it's clear all the way over to Hawaii. We're contemplating just going straight past Hawaii and not even stopping there. Um, depending, we might because just keep we don't that. have any money to spend. It's very expensive. We're, we're in literally Hawaii. like, you know, we're collecting driftwood for the fire. We've spent dumpster all, diving and we've just spent yeah. all of our money today on safety gear, um, uh, emergency beacons, so sat sat navs, um, things so we can pull down the weather. Um, Two thousand dollars for a for a satellite phone and and five hundred dollars for a for an EPIRB and life rafts and all the safety stuff's really expensive. So that's our cruising budget's been blown wide open on safety gear, stuff that we'll never ever need touch wood but it's just peace of mind if something goes wrong or suddenly we spring a plank or the boat takes on water or we hit a shipping container or a whale or whatever something terrible happens then we can jump into a life raft and pull the epirb and hope someone comes and rescues us so living on a boat is quite cheap in in regards to like solar we've got solar panels which charge the batteries which power the lights and we've got candles and things um but it's the maintenance on the boat, which if you ask any anyone living on a boat, that's where everyone's money goes. Yeah. It's whether you're sailing around the world or you're just, you're on anchor or on a mooring boat. Especially in you know, a boat like this. But once you maintain it, and to a certain degree, all it needs is upkeep. Yeah. For us, don't forget, the boat was really bad. It hadn't been, you know, it was terrible condition. Um, so once you spent a solid three months working on it, painting the, you know, painting all of this and, and making it clean, once that's all done, we're not going to have to paint this every week. It just needs a clean, and you know, like it's once it's all done, you should, you know, it's it's a lot easier just upkeep, just like mowing the lawn or washing your car. There's a lot less to do on a boat, but it normally takes three times as long. If you think, oh, this is going to change the taps, or I need to change this, it takes three times as long and costs twice what you think it's going to cost. Yeah, just go for it. Don't let fear get in the way. Fear is what keeps people in the marinas or, or keeps them at home, locked into their suburban lifestyle of wishing and dreaming about sailing around the world when you can just go and do it. It was so comfortable for me in Byron Bay, you know, so comfortable that you get, you want a bit of adventure and a little bit of things that don't go so right. I had it pretty easy, you know, kite surfing every day and running my own business and driving my fancy car my motorbike I didn't it was nice eating healthy and smoothies and you know it's great but oh. I just oh, <laughs> smoothies. Um, it was fantastic but it's nice to have a bit of adventure and you know and that's what we're doing I, and I really want to see the world before I die the world's going to shit slowly and um, be nice to be able to see the things before it all turns to to dust I guess you know it's a bit morbid but I do want to see the world like it'd be ashamed to be lying on your deathbed and think oh, I didn't go to India I would like to see Egypt or I would like to go and see the South Pacific um, yeah so that's kind of why I want to that's my main motivation to go and see the world before I'm dead <laughs> <laughs> there's so much freedom on a boat too you yeah. don't you can just and the wind is free so you can you know it's not like in a camper van where you've got to pay for fuel yeah or when you stop somewhere you have to pay for accommodation or in a, and you know you have to pay for these fees for this and that the you downside the anchor up and off you go there's some downsides there's no shower on board this boat um which means that when as we head south we'll bear the uh, salt water on deck so we'll get a bucket of salt water wash ourselves down and then some fresh water obviously as we get to hawaii and further south the water's warm so it's it's nice when the heavens open up you run outside and have a have a shower um so hygiene's a bit of an issue, you got to keep yourself clean. I don't uh, mind going 10 days without a shower. Erin doesn't mind, but I like my luxuries. I mean, I like a bath every night. Erin doesn't care, she's scruffy. <laughs> 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 so we've got about 10 videos, or 9 or 10 videos up on uh, on a Facebook page and some YouTube stuff. And 
Um, we're just making some videos as we go, having fun doing it. The more you try and focus on the social media or making sure you're capturing all the perfect funny moments or these golden moments, um, you know, you, you're not actually living in the moment. So we just record, we just set the camera and record, forget it's and there. Record and, you know, the things, that, the movies that we do produce are pretty you know, whack. They're pretty crazy. It's just us and it's mainly, you know, we don't want a huge following. It's just to. So people back home can see what we're doing and... There's some pretty crazy videos, like they're not like the normal... This is us sailing and this is, it's it's like we're being kind of... We're just being us, I guess. We're a little bit, you know, we're not the average sort of, um, you know, soap, soap opera watcher or sitting at home. We're kind of on an adventure. Obviously sailing across the world is a bit of adventure. Are you going to ask us what our favourite thing about being on a boat is? Yeah, what's your favourite thing? <laughs> <laughs> I'll what's pretend you? like I haven't thought about this earlier. Um, what's your favourite thing about being on a boat, Erin? I guess my favourite thing about being on a boat would have to be the feeling of being rocked to sleep of a night. Yeah, at night time. It's like being in a crib or a cradle and it's this beautiful gentle rocking mm. it's so nice you get the nicest sleeps sleeping on a boat I just like the freedom of it all and being out there and under the stars and being out on the ocean it's been 10 years since I was living on a boat so I've lived on boats before this is my fifth boat um, and doing such a big trip like this it's just be beautiful out there you know you get these amazing sunsets and it's the, the water colour is just hard to explain, it's this translucent and it's, you know, it's just incredible being out there. So I'm really looking forward to getting back out on the ocean. Mm -hmm.